back-to-back BC Division champions. How does it feel? What are you most proud of? Uh, well, I, I'm proud of, uh, of the group. Um, it's been a, you know, unprecedented challenging time, obviously. And uh, I think the fact that these kids came, you know, to town and uh, abided by the rules and, uh, you know, um, just showed incredible discipline. And, you know, the fact that we went, you know, over two months without a single positive COVID uh, case while, you know, the province is, is battling these uh, variants is, is, you know, says something about our group. And uh, obviously that discipline uh, to really run away with the BC division is, uh, yeah, it feels pretty good. I'm disappointed we don't get to play some, uh, play deep and play playoffs. Yeah, this stuff doesn't happen overnight, and there were some lean years. Um, where can you pinpoint a time or, or a moment where things started to turn for the organization? Uh, well, you know, we made a lot of changes, uh, you know, three odd years ago with our staff, and and so, you know, to some extent, uh, you know, the, you look at the success of the last two years. It's not fair to say that's not that you know that that a lot of those. A lot of those moves were made by the old, uh, the, 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 the other management team that was there. And so I think since the new management teams come in, um, they've just done a, a really great job of, of drafting and recruiting. And so uh, I think that, you know, our old players are, are, are really good. But I think most people that watch our team think that, the, you know, the strength of it is the young players. And so, you know, the, uh, the, the old three and old four uh, drafts, pretty strong for us, obviously. And, and uh, we, we still feel really good about our 05 draft. So um, we think the future is very bright. And, uh, you know, a lot of credit goes to, uh, to Matt Bardsley, uh, Robbie Sandland, and, and uh, the scouting staff. The players didn't get to see it through. The ownership group, the fans, the city of Kamloops. How much do you feel for everybody involved that you couldn't see what you could have done in the playoffs the last two years? Well, it's 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 sad. I mean, it's really frustrating that, you know, we finally – it's our turn. and And – we've got a team that's capable of, uh, you know, making it to the Memorial Cup and, and we don't get the chance. But, you know, I've said it before, it, it is what it is. And, and uh, it's a global pandemic and, and uh, people have lost livelihoods. People have lost their lives. And uh, so I think that's, you know, the coaching that I give to, uh, to people. It, it's that, you know, there's no point feeling sorry for ourselves because we can't play hockey. Uh, and play playoff hockey there's uh, there's bigger things at stake here and, and people around the world and people in our own country that have paid a way higher price than uh, than we have by not playing the playoffs so I think that helps put things into perspective and you know it is what it is and it just makes us uh, that much more um, uh, you know motivated to make sure that we stay on top uh, for when we get past this pandemic the team, like you mentioned, is pretty loaded with some young talent. Next year is supposed to be good again, and maybe especially in, in 2023. What excites you most about the way this team is set up? Well, I just the, just the, the number of great players that we have. And, you know, players pick mid to late rounds that, uh, that, you know, normally you don't expect to have those players, you know, make your team and play. We've got several that, you know, not only made our team, that are going to make our team really good. So... You know, just that we have the high end uh, players, we have the depth. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I, we're, we're really fortunate. We have, uh, you know, an incredible coaching staff with, uh, with Sean Clouston and, and Corey and, you know, unbelievable pedigree there. And, and uh, Matt Bardsley is doing a marvelous job of, uh, of running, the, uh, running the organization. And, uh, you know, our, our, our scouting guys, we've got, uh, We've got a neat staff. It's uh, lots of lots of young people on the staff and lots of older people on the staff. It's a nice blend. Uh, I think that it's worked out really well in terms of uh, having some young some young blood and some young ideas, and then some older guys around that have been around and have the experience and wisdom to bring along the younger guys. So, uh, you know, Matt Bardsley is a fairly young guy as well. So, uh, I think it I think it was really good for our organization to to bring in some more youthful people that are a little closer to, to where the players are at. And, and, uh, cause it's changed. The players today have changed and, uh, uh they're different. They come from different places. Uh, and the, and the challenges on them and the challenges with them are, are, uh, are different than they were, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. So having uh, some young people on staff has really been helpful. What about with you personally, did you change anything about the way you wanted to handle this team at some point? 
Uh, no, I think you know the the big decisions that uh, that I made three years ago were were really what what I just believe that we we weren't heading the right direction, and uh, I think that that group had had you know enough of a chance to uh, to get us to a place, and for some reason we couldn't get there. And you know I don't I don't mean this in a bad way. I'm still friends with 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 those folks and uh, have a lot of respect for them, and some of them have incredible resumes. But it, it just felt like it was time for change, and it was time to uh you know to go elsewhere and 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 you know really identify the the top the top talent uh in terms of who's available who's around the league and who's been having success and you know i think there's always been a a a, a, a push in camelops too because of the blazers past success and there's so much of them and so many amazing people that were connected with it i think there's a there's a there's really always a, a push to uh, to find your solutions in the rafters, find ex blazers that can come help us, you know, be great again. And, uh, you know, that's, that's largely not worked in, in, in counts. It's largely not worked in a lot of markets where, where you see it uh, happen. So, you know, I just think we, we, we just decided it was time to get some younger, younger people around and uh, maybe more relevant around. And so obviously picked Matt out of the Portland organization and Portland had, had lots of success and, so uh, Matt brought a different approach to scouting and, and revamped our scouting system. Robbie Sandland, another young guy, um, loves to scout, loves to be around the rinks, uh, you know, really a hardworking uh, fellow. And so he came in and, and, and became our head scout. And, and so I'm now director of player personnel, I believe. And uh, so those two guys, I think, uh, really made a difference. And then, you know, the coaching, you know, we, uh, we, uh, we landed on Sean Clouston, who had, who's had lots of success in medicine had and and he's come in and and been a great fit and then Corey his brother is really uh you know really again you know NHL coaching pedigree um you know an unbelievable hockey mind um really it's he I think he's really the guy that makes the special teams so good and uh so we've got a a, a really great staff and uh so I, I don't know. We had a really great staff before, but it, it, for whatever reason, it didn't. We just didn't seem to be getting on top, and we just couldn't break through and be, and be one of the best. And uh, you know, today we are. So, uh, you know, I think I think it, it all comes down to drafting and coaching and managing, and uh, we're doing a pretty good job of that. Twenty twenty, yourself, Norm Daly, and some others in the community made a huge push for the Memorial Cup. Uh, you fell just short, and Kelowna won the bid. Um, 2023, do you want to take a shot at it? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think uh, I, I, would, I would hope that our, our community is supportive of that. It was disappointing to, to not win last time. And as it turned out, um, you know, it was, you win nothing, obviously, with, uh, with the pandemic canceling the Memorial Cup. So I'd like to think our team is going to be in a position uh, competitively that, that, that we take it seriously. And I, I would hope that you know, the city, the community, and the, you know, the community leaders uh, uh, that who, who are part of the whole process, you know, uh, starting with Norm Daly, will be, will, be, uh, will be ready to go again. So that would be my hope. Well, I read a couple of stories out of Kelowna that used the word awarded. The, the Kelowna could be awarded the Memorial Cup in 2023, as in given it because it didn't happen in 2020. How do you feel about that? Well, I, I think if that's the right thing to do, then then that could be the right thing to do. Um, I haven't been involved in any formal conversation around that, but uh, you know, if that happens, then we'll 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 deal with it as it comes. So uh, I think it's going to, you know, it just because you you have the market size and the ability financially to host a Memorial Cup, I don't think is enough. So. Uh, you know, if Kelowna is uh, is going to want the cup again in 2023, then they're going to need to have a competitive team, and uh, and so we'll we'll see if they do. Is there a timeline for when this has to be nailed down? Yeah, I think it, it takes a good year of planning. So um, I think uh, I would think later this year, get into the fall. Hopefully, we've got fans back, and we can start having really happy conversations around hockey, and then. You know, if the will's there and the uh, uh, and there will be a competition to uh, to win the Memorial Cup for 2023, I would think would we would get going in 2022 sometime. 
Uh, just a couple of business related, pandemic related questions. When we talked last in December, you talked about how the business was obviously in terrible shape and you projected seven figure damages. Um, as far as lost revenue, did that projection kind of turn out to be accurate and, and how is the state of the um, club financially? Well, we're, we're uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been, uh, it's been a tough process, obviously, and, and we've had to cut costs and, and cut staff and, and cut everywhere we can. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it, it says a lot that our owners found a way to stage a season this year at a, at a, you know, at a, at a loss and a, and a cost. But I think at the end of the day, there's, uh, a bunch of guys that own these teams that understood that we had an obligation to give the kids a chance to play. And so, you know, we found a way to play. It, it was, certainly wasn't cheap. We had to house kids in hotels and feed them and, and, uh, and spend uh, tens of thousands of dollars while well, collectively around the league, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for testing um, and just lots of process to negotiate uh, a roadmap with how we could play with each, uh, each, uh, governmental health agency. So it took a tremendous amount of perseverance. And, you know, I got to give Ron Robinson and Yvonne in the league office and uh, just that they found a way to get four divisions to have a season was, was really incredible because there was many times where it looked impossible. And um, so, you know, credit to the Western Hockey League leadership, uh, credit to the owners that um, in spite of all the losses that we've faced to go dump another a uh, bunch of money to find a way to play, I think says a lot about the league, what we're about and uh, what our owners are about. So, you know, certainly, certainly proud of the effort that we, we put through in, in disastrous financial uh, times that, uh, you know, we found a way to give the kids uh, a, a developmental program. You floated a couple ideas um, about ramifications for the model, the Western league model that could potentially come for this about, you know, will revenues return? Um, if they don't, what happens? Do you have to pay to play? Can your coaching staff be as deep, be as good? Are salaries going to have to be reset? Um, are those still things um, that, 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 are, that are on your mind? Uh, yeah, I think, I think so. Um, you know, I mean, I, I'm generally an optimist. And uh, I think we're seeing enough evidence around the world that where we have vaccinations, life can return to close to normal. And so, you know, certainly watching uh, Southern Hemisphere, Australia, or watching the US or watching the U UK, who are, uh, uh, the US and UK lead the world in vaccinations. And so, uh, and I know by the end of June in British Columbia, we're gonna be over 60% vaccinated, which seems to be the magic number for, uh, for things to recover. So I, I think that, that uh, by the fall there's a high likelihood we'll have fans in the arena so hopefully uh you know that that will uh will restore the, the the normal way of doing business and so we can get back to functioning uh somewhat properly uh with fans in our buildings and uh and uh, and come out of this thing so uh i think we'll be watching when that when that door opens and you know, I think like the NHL, like I think a lot of the leagues are looking at is, you know, uh, is possibly a later start date, you know, uh, to, find a, to find a way where we'll, we'll be able to have fans because sports is not sustainable without fans in, in the building. And so, uh, but I, I'm hopeful that, uh, that by the fall, we're going to be, we're going to be fine. And I think, I think life in Canada and certainly in BC where we're, we're, we're actually getting people vaccinated is, uh, I think by by July we we're, we're going to be in pretty good shape. Just a quick one on the Dallas Stars. Uh, challenging season, incredibly challenging season for the Stars. The pandemic, the COVID outbreak, the storms. Just how challenging was it for your hockey club uh, this this season? Well, it was a, it was always going to be a tough season, and then we lost uh, about two and a half weeks of it, and um, you know with the COVID breakout at the beginning, and then. Uh, as you said, the storms. And so that meant that we had a tremendous number of games pushed into a small amount of time. And we went the last two months playing four games in six nights. We never had two consecutive days off in over two months. And, um, you know, not to make excuses, but that's not, that's not fair. It's not hockey. And, um, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. I mean, it, it's, 
it, there's a lot of teams that went through it and uh, it was just a really tough year for us and and uh, we lost two or three of our top six forwards and we didn't have a starting goalie this year with Ben Bishop being out so the cards were stacked against us and, and I think that the, the schedule compression was really the four point difference we had between making the playoffs and not was clearly that and you know having we just had too much skill out of the lineup all year and and uh we we ended up losing i think 14 overtime shootout games which really is a skill competition and so we missed the playoffs by uh by four points and uh lost 14 times in, in overtime so it, it's pretty obvious to see where we missed and uh but being around it, it was just a tough year. We, we, we were one of the most injured teams, and, uh, and uh, the guys put a, a heck of an effort in. But many nights, we just didn't have the, didn't have the legs and didn't have the gas to, uh, to, uh, to get it done. So, um, you know, we chalk it up to what it is. It's a, it's a tough year, and it's kind of really tough to look at our record and see that we were, the, we were the top record not to make the playoffs, and we have a better record than other playoff teams. But that's the game. Uh, last one is just on your your personal stress level this past year. I mean, the Stars and the Blazers are just two of your two of the things under your umbrella, and you talk about Northland as well. And uh, it must have felt sometimes like the world was crumbling around you. Um, how, how hard has it been, or how challenging has it been, or how stressful has it been to to deal with these uh, these times? Yeah, it's been a been a challenging year by uh, by every measure. Um, and, uh, and I'm in the, primarily the hospitality real estate business. And so it's been, uh, uh, tremendously tough and, and, uh, all of our business has been affected and it's, uh, yeah, I, I just, <laughs> it, it helps you change perspective. I think I've had to develop some skills I didn't know I had. And I think those skills will be helpful, you know, moving forward in terms of, um, you know, just focusing on things you can control and uh, not worrying about the things that you have no control over and so uh those are skills that uh, i've had to learn to develop and and uh you know i think they, they'll come in helpful in the future some tough decisions even here in Kamloops with staffing um how, how i guess how much did it pain you to have to to do that um and you know are you hopeful that you can um maintain staffing levels as you go forward well, yeah, it's been been uh, very challenging, and my you know main business is you know we had we had to downsize uh, you know with with thousands of employees, and so it it's been that that all happened early on you know a year ago, and that, that was a tremendously difficult time for us, and so um, you know the good news is that in Canada that you know the government's done a pretty good job of looking after. Uh, people and so we stayed in touch with a lot of our folks and you know people are managing and, and I think now that you know the job market is has, has stayed pretty good during COVID and uh, and now there's no question we're going to short we're going to be facing labor shortages moving forward so I think that when people lose their jobs or or get you know laid off you know you always worry about their welfare and an opportunity to, to work but i don't think there's going to be any any challenges with people finding work in 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 canada um in the certainly now and certainly very soon because i think that once we turn the corner on this pandemic the uh the economy is going to really really go and uh what we're seeing around the world is you know really severe labor shortages and so there'll be lots of opportunity for people to work and, and i think Fortunately, with the social programs and, and employment in Canada has kept up pretty well. So uh, it's good to see. Our industry is certainly hurt. And uh, we've seen many people from hospitality land in other industries where, uh, where employment hasn't been as effective. Anything else you wanted to add uh, about the Blazers or anything else that's on your mind? No, just thank you to uh, all the fans and, and, and folks that support us in Counts. Our, our sponsors have been unbelievable. And, uh, you know, all of our sponsors... Um, showed up again this year uh, when we needed them the most and so I just want to shout out to uh, to all the people in counts that support junior hockey support the counts blazers and uh, you know we love our sponsors and uh, hoping to be back the right way very soon